Hi everyone, it's your boy Zach, and uh, oh boy, I just have so many thoughts. First of all, I'm recording a video with way too low of battery life, which is very dramatic. Uh, what is the deal? Do you remember flip phones? They used to really dramatically warn you when you were about to die, and uh, but they would also let you get all the way to like 1%. Now I get no warning, and it'll just click off at like 13%, but whatever. Um, anyway, so uh, the other one, the other thing I wanted to say is, um, um, uh, I think it was that umbrella guy. He he was talking about this guy called Onision, who I had to Google who he was. He's some like proto YouTuber from like the first days, where every single person who started a channel back then has now has like seven million followers because there was no one else to follow. Uh, but I guess he's having one of those extended breakdowns and now his channel is like an I'm having a breakdown channel. That guy is the worst fake crier I've ever seen. It's so, it's so bad. And then I like Googled his life and I guess like fake crying and, you know, being a drama channel is one of his things. But it seems like he has reasons to cry for real right now. And yet even when he has legitimate reasons to cry for real it literally looks like his whole life is over he's fake crying i was just like man there's a point at which you have fake emotions for so long that the, you can't have real ones anymore uh but anyway my point is um not everything has to be dramatic you know what i mean if you've got a point you can just kind of calmly express yourself so saying we've lost donny cates obviously he's still alive he still has a career he's still healthy all those type of things but in the fundamental things i feel like we have lost him already so one of the very tragic comic bits about life is you learn everything too late <laughs> And then you tell younger people and they go, whatever, old man, you're stupid. <laughs> um, and then you remember when you were young and people gave you advice and you ignored it. So basically the human race is just learning things too late and then trying to impart it onto other people and then ignoring it. And then the same thing, you did the same thing. Um, but uh, anyway, in life, you know, it, it, things that end, you know, a job that ends, a relationship that ends, a friendship that ends, there's the literal day that it ends someone says i don't like you i don't want to hang out with you don't talk to me anymore but the thing is they probably were leaning towards that for a while beforehand and they mentally probably subconsciously made that decision days or weeks beforehand so this is one where i actually realized the point at which i was <laughs> sick of him and I re and I, I consciously realize as I go, I'm sick of this guy. Um, so Donny Cates is, you know, he's a guy who um, I, I got to tell you, man, we got to slow down comic book careers because one of the problems is we see this with Scott Snyder and Tom King and, and Donny Cates and, you know, Mags, um, is that people get pushed way too far, way too fast, way too many assignments and much too much praise and any criticism of them is you know is is classified as harassment and then ignored it's like slow down it's like that uh uh what was it phil hartman impersonating charlton heston talking to uh bill cosby bill it's film take it down a notch slow down look at people like frank miller Look at people like Alan Moore. They were in the trenches of Mark Miller, all these people. They were, they were just taking whatever fill in issues and, you know, backups and in annuals and just whatever. You don't have to give someone an Eisner nom for their first job. You don't have to put people, someone on Batman, they're, they're second or third in the in, year in the industry. And you don't need to say someone's the savior of Marvel. The first year they got to Marvel, it's um, it's not good. It doesn't help them out. It, it's 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 bad for everyone. Um, so uh, Donny Cates, you know, he's he had a couple things, you know, you know, several years ago, but he kind of got on the radar screen with God Country. What was that like three years ago? And then he started getting Marvel work, and he got a lot of Marvel work, and then he basically was handled all of Marvel. 
Um, and uh, he wasn't ready for it. <laughs> and he's pretty much, as far as I can tell, in, in a kind of non-dramatic but definitive way, kind of cracked under the pressure. He casts about for people and he's like, oh, this person's on Twitter all day. This person can help me out. <laughs> what a helpful person. And now he, he basically speaks and acts the same as the 12 psychos on Twitter. Maybe not as often and as intensely, but his voice is essentially the same. So um, I've got a, a, a big backlog of graphic novels and floppies and zines and people have sent me or I've bought. And the good news is that Boomer finally figured out how to schedule. So I can, you know, on a lazy Saturday, I can burn through like six books, you know, and then just schedule them for in the next two weeks. Um, so all the, you know, the graphic novels I've accumulated, accumulated over the last two years, um, geez, uh, Extinction Agenda, Batman Year Two, um, uh, the, uh, uh, the, the Fourth World Compendium, the, um, I think it was Cumberpatch Pepperpot, he sent me the, uh, that's one of those names where you think you're going to screw it up, and then you just take it slow, and then you say it correctly, Cumberpatch Pepperpot, uh, he sent me, it's like the, it's all like the odds and sods of uh, Jack Kirby's uh, 70s DC work, it's like the Losers, and uh, Commandy, and um, the Demon, um, but I'm, you know, I'm working my way through it. And one of the things I'm very, very excited about is going through these long form interviews with Frank Miller and Alan Moore and other people like that. Uh, I mentioned this a million times, but, you know, the zines, the Amazing Heroes comics interview, um, even the early years of like Wizard, you would get these crazy interviews that would go 10, 20, 30, 40 pages. And I'm not talking just about like a blurb per page and a bunch of ads. I'm talking about like dense you know like a newspaper that you know that size of font in a slight you know in a smaller page size but man alive they, they would just talk and talk and talk about their career and their school and i remember like i know that you know mike zek said that he somehow got out of the draft for vietnam like they just told you about their lives they told you how they got into comics and all that you know trying to break in and all those type of things and one of the things I'm really excited about showing instead of just telling is the attitudes of Frank Miller and Alan Moore when they were blowing up, when it was like 86, 87, 88, and they're just doing whatever they want. Every single thing is a grand slam or a home run. Uh, every single thing is, is, is critical uh, success, commercial success. Alan Moore could even do something like big numbers with Bill Sienkiewicz and brought to light and those would do good. And, and they were just, the world was their oyster as most likely it is for Donny Cates at this moment. And I got to say for as much talent as they had, which stood the test of time, although, you know, people don't talk about big numbers and brought to light as <laughs> you want to hear <laughs> You want to read a book about Iron Contra? Um, uh, but um, I would not say humble, but I would say well-balanced. Um, uh, Alan Moore and uh, Frank Miller are both uh, blue-collar uh, guys. You know, um, I don't know if Alan Moore's parents were veterans. I'm assuming they were, you know, or they, they, they lived during the Blitz, things like that. Um, but um, uh, humble ish you know they were very confident uh but not cocky and uh very kind of bright and hopeful and they spoke to people respectfully <laughs> I, I, like i said one of the things about fandom in, in the 80s is you know most of it was like reading the letters column of love, letters column of like comics buyers guy but occasionally you know you talk to someone at a store you know there weren't a lot of conventions back then and they would they would tell you about oh i went to a convention and then they would tell you their horror story they're like i i got a signature of john byrne and he drew me you know a vindicator from alpha flight um but then when i said thank you sir he just grumbled you're welcome and everyone would be like oh my gosh he's so mean <laughs> It's like this guy, like John Byrne at the height of his fame, did, did a signature 
and a, a, a sketch for you, but he didn't look at you in the eye and smile. And like your heart was like, your heart wasn't just broken. It was like, it's still like an eternal bleeding. It's like, ah, he didn't want to be my best friend. Um, but uh, now creators are just little shits with people. And again, you know, out of context, this this tweet right here doesn't seem that big of a deal. It's a guy, um, and I did a little cursory inspection. This guy seems to be not a troll, a legitimate fan of Don Cates, Donny Cates. And he basically said, hey, this guy, Professor Thorgy, who I know, I remember that name from like two and a half years ago when I was, I'm going to start a YouTube channel. So I spent like a, afternoon you know researching all the popular ones and i remember his um i remember his was kind of like middle of the road opinions if if i remember correctly um and some guy just you know very politely is like um yeah um you should check this out he has some good constructive criticism he's like i'm good and yes it could be like i'm good but it's still i'm good as usually said in that kind of like snotty way And, and, and if you scroll through his timeline you see some legitimate promotion, um, but then also just like just being snotty and, and, and mean and, and petty as hell uh, to customers, to, to actual customers. People have bought your stuff and seem to really, really like you. Um, and I understand being under pressure um, uh, and I understand being tired and I understand, you know, being asked the same question for the millionth time, but you, you got to suck it up. Um, but I feel like we've seen the little, you know, too far, too fast, pick the wrong friends, that, that old tale from the sea, um, is, I, I feel like there's a, there's a, there's some motherfuckers out there with, uh, uh, the ego that Alan Moore earned with a level of talent of, of Cullen Bunn. So uh, why don't you dial it down a notch? I mean, there's always that hot writer. And then five years later, you're like, where is where is Rick Remender? Where is Matt Fraction? Where is Brian Wood? Where is oh, what's the other guy? He was he was writing and then he went to go draw Southern Bastards. And then he just there's people just disappear. <laughs> it's um. You can be you know, definitely be confident in your skills and be proud of your accomplishments, but don't be a little snotty shit with people like ever. And if you are, if you wake up in the morning, apologize <laughs> because, you know, it's it's that old saying. I don't really remember how it goes, but it's something like people won't remember what you said, but they will remember how you made them feel. And for that guy, it probably made him feel kind of shitty. Uh, probably wasn't the biggest deal, but he's going to remember that. And then also... People saw you be kind of shitty. And also, why are you being shitty? I mean, uh, gosh, I wish I would have. I think I screenshot. Oh, yeah, I did screenshot this. And then I tried to put it on my community page. And then YouTube was like, rejected. It's like wrong aspect ratio. It's like, well, just don't you guys, don't you guys have a freaking subroutine? I'll just handle that. But it basically talked about how just, just weird comic book pros are. There was a guy who was an illustrator. He goes, it's consistently shocking how like, bitter and arrogant and mean comic book pros are especially when many of them you know if you put them into another field a similar field if you put a popular comic artist into graphic arts you know for marketing and advertising like most of these guys would not hack it they wouldn't even get the interview they're just not good enough and these writers that get you know boasted as just being just like the next alan moore this is just like one out of eight people, you know, doing the story beats for this uh, issue or this episode of NCIS, <laughs> like you're not, you're nothing special. It's you're not even a big fish in a in a small pond. You're a big fish in a puddle. <laughs> like you're not even underwater. You're just flopping around. You're asphyxiating. Um, but anyway, kind of a rambling video. Oh, I forgot to say, I I, I did this rambling video because I read a comic. Yeah, people still read comics. <laughs> then they, you know, they still make comics, and people occasionally review them. Pretty much everyone's moved on from reviewing comics because nobody cares about comics <laughs> anymore. <laughs> um, uh, but I read this book. It was uh, it was the Crow Christmas Special, and um, it was written by Tim Seeley. Um, and I got that weird thing where it's this is a book which is neither good nor bad. It merely exists. 
And we really need people to do better work than that. It's like that, uh, that line from Idiocracy, lead, follow, or get out of the way. And then the main character is like, He's like, yeah, when Sergeant tells me that, I get out of the way. And then the other, then his buddy is like, it's supposed to embarrass you into trying to lead or at least following. Um, but if you're put in some leadership position, like Donnie Cates says, you know, way too early in his career, have some humility. Don't treat people like shit because they're going to remember it. You know, in, you know, a couple of years when you're really, really trying to get that Power Girl one shot over at DC. People are going to pick up your book and just make a little face. Go, oh, this guy made me feel like shit five years ago for no damn reason. So anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, subscribe. Make sure you're still subscribed. Hit the bell for notifications. Thanks to everyone giving to the GoFundMe and the Indiegogo. You're funding original content and an original lawsuit. And I will have more videos on this channel. <laughs> Not necessarily comic book reviews because comics are kind of over. Um, anyway, thanks for watching. Bye.